in today's video we will be learning how we can add gltf as a digit body so you can detect the collision of gltf and based on that we can animate it so this is the same project file that i created in last video you can check out the video that is based on mojs first we'll make the plane bigger so that we have enough space for the multiple collision we will remove function create ball to and instead of create ball we will be adding gltf loader and make it it instance let's first import gltf loader and recall loader make sure to download all the draco files from the 3js repo place all the draco files into the static folder delete the code of creating ball in the 3js and then create new gltf loader and the draco loader we will set the decoder path of the draco loader and we will load our gltf loader let's add this mesh to new to new constant now just like how we added physics to the ball we will also add this physics to the gltf specifically for physics purpose you will have to add these transformations into the loader itself or you can even define a new function where specifically you can calculate its shape and then and then go ahead with the physics if you know mojs then these are the basic transformation properties you have to set and then we will add motion set and local inertia now for the shape we cannot use sphere or box shape because it won't calculate all the faces of the geometry that we want to make a better collision so what we want as a shape is a convex hull shape so what is a convex hull shape if you know 3d softwares like blender or any other cinema 4d or any other software that provides physics simulation then you can easily know how the physics work from different objects so let's visualize it so if we have this cube and when when we add rigid when we add this rigid body and change its shape to box then you can see that it it has a border on it now let's change it to sphere and you will see that the box is is contained under the sphere in matter of physics if you change it to any other shape like cylinder or cone it will change its shape according to the cube so on collision the physics will be calculated based on this shape not on the cube and so to change it we have to have the perfect shape for the for any objects that we use for example if we use sphere then we have to have the sphere shape if we use the susan then then if we apply the box then it will collide in, in shape of box similarly with the different shape but with convex hull it will be it will be perfect collision is the collision shape will be same as the mesh but to calculate the convex hull shape is pretty challenging so i have tried many techniques and only one one worked in others i didn't get the expected result that i wanted for the collision to happen so there was a post on 3js forum where someone already asked about how to add mojs physics to the gltf so i re replied him and asked about the errors code and he did really help me out so let's start with it we'll delete this sphere shape calculate the vertices present on this gltf i first get the position attribute position attribute of the geometry of this object and stored it into vertices pose then i defined a new empty array called triangles and run a for loop where i push position x y and z into the triangles in respect with the each vertex of this object so this is the pretty common way to fetch the position attribute or rotation attribute or is or scale attribute of the of the gltf object and store it into the new array so that you can manipulate the array and the vertices so now we need to add this vertices to a new to new mo mesh that will help us create a new convex shape so we have defined a triangle mesh in which we will be called in which we have called mo.bt triangle mesh in which we will push each as x y z vertex of the faces that are present on the object to add this triangles data to a new shape we'll run a for loop with the length of the triangle array in which we'll push all these vertex data to vector a vector b and vector c Now we'll add this vector a, vector b, and vector c into a new triangle mesh that we have created here. 
so this will create a new triangle for each of the vertex that are present on this object now we don't need this triangle data anymore so we will destroy it by creating mo.destroy and we will add these vectors into it that now we have created a triangle mesh that has data of all the triangles all the faces that are present on this object so let's create a new shape so now we will create a shape called bt convex triangle mesh shape and in which we will pass the triangle mesh data that we just created this will create a final shape of the object for mo now we need to set this geometry dot vertices need update equal to true and then we'll set the shape margin like we like we had done in the ball example in previous video the rest all the code will be same where we calculate local inertia by passing mass and the local inertia and we'll get a new rigid body info by setting mo.bt rigid body construction info like we have done in the ball example then by then by passing this rigid body info into the bt rigid body we'll get a new rigid body and pass it and add it into the physics world and then we'll set the user data of the object physics body equal to this rigid body we'll push this rigid body into the rigid body array that we have created in the previous video i i would define i would define wrong i would define a wrong parameter of course Okay, so let's save it and see the results. Instead of 2 and 3, we have to keep here 1 and 2. And you also change it to Z if you have done it to X. Let's change some camera angle. So using this same technique, we will create an instance mesh with this object. Okay, so now let's create the instances of this mesh. So first, let's clear out the physics for this object. In the GLTF loader, we will create a new instance mess, and for that, let's create a new function called create instances. In this function, we will create a new matrix and a count number like what like what number of instances we want. Now we will define a new instance mess from 3JS in which we will pass a geometry, material, and the count number. So in this mess, that each object has a randomized position and the rotation. And so to randomize it, we will run a for loop in which we will set this matrix with random position and random and random rotation to each object of this mess. Now this particular function called randomize matrix will randomize the position, rotation and the scale of the each object and then it will return the matrix so that we can set its matrix to the mess. So for position we will get vector 3, for rotation we will get Euler and for contarian we will get the contarian and for scale we also get vector 3. Now we return a function with all the randomized value inside the matrix. We will set the position x to a random number that is multiplied by 10. So we will get any number that is from 0 to 10 and we will subtract 5 from it so that we can normalize it between minus 5 to 5. We will set this value on y and z axis. On y axis, I won't normalize it. In the similar way, we will also randomize the rotation x, y, and z by multiplying mat.pi into some values. Euler is basically the transformation of the axis that are x, y, and z. So in Blender, z axis is the vertical axis, but in the 3JS, y axis is the vertical axis. So to properly set the rotation, we need to set Euler from the rotation that we have just calculated. We will also set its scale. So call matrix.composition and we will pass position, quaternion and scale. Now in the for loop, we will add this matrix to the every geometry and we will enable the cast shadow of the geometry equal to 2. So, so we didn't get any results. Let's see why we have passed geometry and material to the instance mesh. But we didn't have any geometry or the material in this function. So we need to pass so we need to pass geometry of this gltf and this material and the material of it so let's add geometry and the material from the gltf loader we'll add this instant mass to the scene here it is only one gltf in fact it's not one gltf there are 50 gltf models here but the position of the all models are the same so it seems like there is only one as you as you already guessed randomized matrix is not working because here we are returning a function. We have to make this randomized function a self-calling function. So now we got an instant mesh of, of 50 GLTF models. So we'll remove the randomized scale value and we'll set it to 1. Okay, so in position Y, I have added 10 plus any randomized value. So as you, as you can see, we have created all the instances for the GLTF models and now we want to add physics on each of these. So we'll copy the same code that we have used for single model. 
Let's first add the triangle mesh and calculate all the and get vertex data from all the geometry. As the geometry is same for all the model, we only need to pass it once. So like we did for single GLTF, we will also do it here. Now, now we'll pass now we'll pass this triangle mesh into the BT convex triangle mesh shape. We'll also set the geometry dot vertices need update equal to two so that all the vertices are updated once it is calculated into the MO. Let's create a new function where we will handle all the transformation calculation for each of the object in the instance mesh. We'll also define the empty array called body so that we can so that we can push all the ob all the single object into the bodies as an array. Now let's run the for loop where we will calculate each object's transformation for MO, its motion state, local inertia and we will build a rigid body for the same. So for each of the object we have defined a transform and we have set the open GL matrix of that transform with index of the each. We will also define the motion state, its local inertia and we will calculate the local inertia where we don't have any shape so we need to, need to pass the shape in this function. Let's also pass the mass that is the 1. Now let's build a rigid body construction in based on this we'll create a rigid body and we will pass it to the physics world. We need to push this single body into the body's array so that we can use it later on. We need to define an array called message and we'll also define a weak map so that we can map through the each message and we can calculate its position. As, as we are using MO in all the functions, we need, we need to have the MO in here. Now let's add this instant mesh into the into the meshes array. We'll set the mesh map that is the weak map with mesh and the bodies array. We need a last function called set set mesh position in which we'll pass the instant mesh position of the each object with it with its index. So let's call set so let's call set mesh position. In here we'll check if the mesh is instance mesh. Then we will get its map and the body's array. With the help of weak map, we get a weak, weak map array from the mesh and we will pass its in and we will use the index to get each of the body and then we will calculate its linear velocity and its angular velocity. Now if you remember, then we have a temporary transformation. So in the set mesh position function, we need the temporary transformation to set the world transformation of the body. Now we need to calculate all this data into the update function so for that let's run the new for loop where we will calculate the mesh from the meshes array here we will also check if the mesh is instance mesh then, in, then similarly we will get the array from the instance matrix and a weak map from the mesh to get all the bodies let's add another for loop inside this for loop so we will get the body from the bodies array and we will set its motion state and the world transformation Now we need another function called compose in which we will pass position, quaternion and the instant matrix array which will give us the whole calculated array in, in respect with all the position, quaternion and its indexes. Copied this function from the 3JS repo L. For now I am not going to explain this function as it is very complicated to explain each of this each of this line. We need to update the instance matrix. Now let's save this and see if, if it is running or not. So you can increase the count number or do the stress test yourself but keep in mind that not all devices can run smoothly this much of the count. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, have fun and peace.